Donald Trump, meanwhile, set to address thousands of conservatives this afternoon. Also in Colorado, the GOP presumptive nominee will be speaking at the Western Conservative Summit in Denver as part of an effort to unite what has become a highly fractured party ahead of this month's convention in Cleveland. The 2008 vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin is set to address the conference as well. And Major Garrett is at the Colorado Convention Center there in Denver, where Donald Trump again set to speak later today. Major, what exactly then is the presumptive GOP nominee looking to accomplish with his remarks today, again, in a state that he lost to Ted Cruz? Build party unity and give himself some visible momentum three weeks before the Republican National Convention. And this is about the best place for him to test whether or not he can accomplish that. Why? Because this will be the largest gathering of conservative party activists outside of Washington this calendar year. And as it happens, it occurs three weeks before the convention in Cleveland. There will be supportive voices for Donald Trump here, to be sure. Chief among them, Sarah Palin, John McCain's running mate in 2008, earlier endorser of Trump in the Iowa caucuses. Phil Robertson, Duck Dynasty star, if you want to call him that. And he also shows up at some <laughs> victory rallies for Trump. He'll be here supporting Trump. But there'll be some harshly critical voices here as well. Ben Sass, the Republican freshman senator from Nebraska, who goes to Twitter with some regularity to denounce Trump on lots of different fronts. And Eric Erickson, who is a conservative blogger and party activist and radio host, who spends a lot of his time, even this week, denouncing Trump's effect not only on the national political debate itself, writ large, but on the Republican Party itself. So there will be friendly and hostile voices here, and the crowd will sort of get a chance to decide which part of that argument they're most persuaded by, Trump's, Palin's, Robertson's, or Sass's, Eric Erickson, and some of the other Trump skeptics who will be here. And so that is really kind of an acid test for Trump. And the question, can you bring restive conservatives together in a state where you got out-organized, where Ted Cruz grabbed all 34 delegates, and where you said afterward, if you're Donald Trump, the whole system is rigged and crooked. When Donald Trump began his agitated arguments against Republican National Committee methodology of selecting a nominee, he began it after he got trounced here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So there's that bad blood to deal with as well. So there's a local story here in Colorado with the Republican Party, its chairman and all of its activists, and then all those who come from other states to hear what Donald Trump has to say. Uh, you mentioned Sarah Palin, obviously a, another very polarizing voice, if nothing else. What do we expect her role in the Trump campaign, as you mentioned, an early uh, endorser of uh, the nominee? What do we expect uh, her role to be uh, moving forward? All of that is being sorted out. It has been only recently, and by that I mean within the last week, that the Trump campaign has put anyone actually functionally in charge of campaign surrogates, meaning those who have a high profile who would like to speak on behalf of Donald Trump. So they only have someone with that portfolio for less than a week. And now they're deciding what to do and how to do this. That's all being run through the idea and the prism of how do you schedule speakers for the Republican National Convention. Then after that, the deployment of surrogates like Sarah Palin will come into sharper focus. My guess is Palin will make herself available and Trump will deploy her in places where she's most likely to do good and least likely to do harm. That's kind of the way surrogates are treated. But I would say this about Trump. He really isn't someone who needs surrogates. He is what he is. He conveys and holds press attention and commands the stage, unlike many others who have run for this office before and even become major party nominees. So I think surrogates, though interesting, are a less potent part of the Trump presentation than they would be, say, for Jeb Bush or Ted Cruz or John Kasich or any of the others who challenged Trump in this process. Uh as we uh, get closer then to the convention where Donald Trump has said he will officially announce his vice presidential pick uh, and realizing that when somebody's vetted, that is simply the due diligence on the part of the campaign. We are now seeing perhaps something of a short list with regard to uh, the GOP on it. House speak, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich on it. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. What do you make of those two? So those two are on the list. The list has been reduced to five. I have been very reliably told by those closest to the process within the Trump inner circle. 
I have been told and led to believe that Tom Cotton, freshman Republican senator from Arkansas, also made the list of the five. I don't have the other two, but names that are frequently brought up. Bob Corker, senator from Tennessee, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. Jeff Sessions, Republican senator from Alabama, the first and only senator to endorse Donald Trump, are all in that list. Joni Ernst was thought to be on that list, didn't make the final cut of five, I am told. So those, are the, those may be the five. We know three for sure. And I've also been led to believe by those closest to this process within the Trump campaign that the person will be announced the Thursday or Friday before the Republican mm. convention in Cleveland to ride that wave of publicity and a few rallies that weekend leading into the convention to create some excitement, some dynamism, introduce the ticket to the country and the convention delegates a few days beforehand. Major Garrett in Colorado, we appreciate it. You got it.